everyone from Bangkok, Thailand. We have officially made it. We actually landed yesterday morning. Our flight practically cost us one night. So all day yesterday we were absolutely shattered. So I didn't even bother filming anything because we were just in quite terrible moods to be honest. Our direct flight ended up being about 11 hours and then we landed at 6 a.m. Thailand time. So when we were in the airport, it was still dark outside. And then we had to wait all day until you check into our hotel. We basically just went out, explored the city a little bit, had a little walk around. And then as soon as we checked into our hotel, we went to sleep. We probably shouldn't have. We probably should have waited till the evening a little bit more. But honestly, as soon as my head hit that pillow, I was gone. Somehow I managed to get back to sleep, which was good. And then we are up now again. It's nearly 9am so we have sort of wasted the morning a little bit but do you know what it's worth it to have that little bit of energy. Today is actually New Year's Eve in the UK. They are not as big on New Year's here in Thailand but they do still celebrate it so definitely in Bangkok there will be some celebrations going on today. Today we've got a couple of plans. Callum wants to go and see this dog cafe that he's seen on TikTok. There is a few temples which we're going to go and visit today as well and then tonight we are going to head down to Koh San Road which if you've ever heard about Bangkok you probably know about Koh San Road. It's like the main party centre of Bangkok. One thing I really want to do with these vlogs is I want to be very very transparent with the cost of things. Something I didn't come across very often when I was planning this trip was actually how much things cost so people talking about like the entry fees to certain temples and how much it costs to get your food and your transport and stuff like that <laughs> I also want to note that the whole check-in process at the airport was super, super easy. We were a little worried because we saw a few people on their videos talking about how they sometimes ask at the airport to see your return ticket or like an outbound journey. Onward but travel, cool. Onward travel tickets, but we didn't have that. You're covering my light. We checked in at the desk. She did ask for a return date and I just said, oh, we're, we don't really have one at the minute. I panicked a bit on the spot and she didn't seem to, to care at all. And then coming into Thailand was the same, no question questions asked, very easy, that was that. From the airport we managed to get a grab which is essentially the Thailand slash Southeast Asia version of an Uber which was super cheap, I think it was 341 baht which is about five pounds and that was like a half an hour journey so actually really really cheap compared to what an uber would cost you in london we then spent the day trying to find a sim card for our phones so that we could have some data out here the lovely man who owns this hostel his name is boss he told us that you could go into a 7-eleven and ask for a sim card but when we went out walking we were a little bit confused as to like what he meant by that. So we came back to the hostel, asked him again, and then went back and, and tried to get one in the 7-Eleven. It really is as simple as it sounds. If you just ask at the counter for a 30-day unlimited data SIM, they will just give one to you like that. And they are super cheap. One thing I was told before coming, and I do recommend to you guys, is don't buy one at the airport. We were contemplating it at first because it all looked very easy in the airport and very appealing just whilst you're there. But the SIMs that they were offering for 30 days at the airport were costing a thousand baht, which I think is about 12 pounds no, for a month. 24 pounds. That works out to about 24 pounds. A thousand. Oh shit, yeah, it's 24 pounds at home, which is a lot for one month of unlimited data. Oh. To put it in perspective, we ended up finding a SIM card, which was, we got it for 300 baht, which I think, how much did we say? It was seven pounds, roughly seven pounds at home. Seven pounds for one month unlimited data and it's 5G network everywhere. So it's actually really strong, quite quick network as well. So don't settle for anything more expensive than that. We actually went into the MBK shopping mall yesterday as well, which is where we ended up getting our SIM. There's literally a whole floor in that shopping mall, which is dedicated to phones, mobile shops, Honestly, I'd say like easily a hundred shops, which all sell the exact same thing. Anyways, I don't want to sit here rambling all day. We are going to go to some temples today. We are going to go out tonight and I'm just going to update you through the day, what we're getting up to, what we're eating, what we're doing and see how Bangkok is today. So this morning, Lucy and I decided to get on our first tuk-tuk and take a ride to a dog cafe, which we had planned to go to. They are actually a bit more expensive than a taxi or a grab. However, for the experience and how iconic they are in Thailand, it's definitely worth doing. This journey actually cost us about 500 baht and I'll explain why later. You can, you can, you, you, you can see the boat. Something had uh, the tip the canal. This yeah. is what Arun, Gan uh, Palet and uh, Wat Po. See that the fit farm, fit farm, how could I? Uh, fit farm and the royal beast. Let me just check because I have a feeling. This, one, this name Dam Nen Sadwak. You see? Why? Dam, 14 market Dam Nen Sadwak. Fuck. Opens at 11. 
Huh? Eleven uh, opens. Opens it. I think you take One hour. tomorrow, right, mate? Tomorrow or Sunday. Maybe tomorrow. So I'm sure you can gather from what you've just watched, but we basically got to the dog cafe about 15 minutes up the road and it was actually closed because Callum didn't check beforehand. So definitely make sure you check before you waste your money. We were then trying to come to an agreement with the guy who was driving the tuk-tuk as to where to go next. And he basically told us about this river tour, which takes us along the river to show us the temples and stuff. So we decided to do it. So this is us getting on our boat. So we somehow managed to, I say we, Callum did all of it, I have stayed silent so far, but Callum's haggled his way down from 3,000? No, it's 2,200. 2,200 to 1,600 for this boat tour, which probably is still excessive, we probably get it cheaper, um, is taking us across the river which goes down past Wa'arun, Wapo and the Grand Palace temples, which are the three that we really wanted to see mostly anyway. It is also New Year's Eve, so I know that the prices are a bit dearer than normal. Um, but we've got this private boat to ourselves for one hour on the river. So 1,600, 800 each, which is roughly probably somewhere around 20 pounds. Um, so it's still a little bit pricey, but um, definitely more, more like the price we wanted to pay. Yeah. Floating market. Yeah. Oh. I see the uh, literally. Man. We actually have one. We've got one already. Wow. Okay. I'm okay. I'm okay. Thank you, my man. Top top Thailand. No, no, we we're, we're good. We're good. Mm. No, we're, we're good, <laughs> man. Nothing. That's cool. That's cool. You know. All good, all good. I would say if you're interested in seeing the city, the boat is a really good way to do it. It's very, very peaceful. You do get your own private boat with your family or your partner or whoever you're with. We just really enjoyed the experience. Oh. So we've just got our ticket to get into the Wat Po Temple. Oh my goodness. Wat Po is one of the largest and oldest temples in Bangkok and it was also one of the first public universities in Thailand for studying traditional medicine and traditional Thai massage which is still taught and practiced at the temple now. The temple is just absolutely stunning, the detail everywhere, the gold leaves, just every mosaic on every little inch of the buildings, absolutely stunning. Of course out of respect you have to take your shoes off when you're entering any of the rooms and there were some locals in there doing some prayers but yeah absolutely stunning. The chairs laid out in this courtyard are supposedly there for the monks. And if you're wondering about the strings that are waving in front of our faces in this clip, we were also confused. So we Googled it and apparently the strings hanging above the chairs are meant to transfer the benefits of the blessing from the Buddha directly down onto each participant beneath them. So yeah, little fun fact for you. <laughs> Now this is the giant reclining Buddha, which is one of Wat Po's most symbolic attractions in the whole of the temple. It's essentially a giant masterpiece covered in gold leaf, and it's a representation of the Buddha lying on his side contently just before he passed into the afterlife. And the dropping of the coins into the little Wats on the way out are supposedly meant to bring you luck. stumbled across this tiny little shop just across from the Wat Po temple and they were selling authentic Pad Thai for 50 baht so that is what we've gone for for lunch. It's technically brunch because we actually also didn't eat breakfast this morning but mm, this looks so good. Just got our tickets to the Grand Palace, 500 baht each, 1, quite expensive. Baht. So 1,000 baht is 
24 pounds. 24 so, pounds. Yeah, 12 pounds each to get in. But it looks incredible. Obviously, something to note as well is that women have to be covered on their shoulders and their legs. But also for this <coughs> temple, men do as well. You have to be wearing long pants. So we put them in our bag and thank God we did. I might be wrong, but I'm pretty sure that the clips I'm showing you here are not actually inside the Grand Palace and they are a separate temple to the Grand Palace. It might all be one connected, which is why you have to gain access like with the ticket, but I'm not too sure. But regardless, it's absolutely stunning. I mean, just look at the sheer detail of everything on these buildings. You can't even begin to imagine how long it takes to make and restore these buildings. This one that I'm about to show you is the Grand Palace and it is the residence of the King of Thailand. So my darling, what was your, what was your thoughts on the palaces and the temples we've seen today? Oh, they were incredible. The Emerald Buddha was really cool, but we couldn't uh, take any pictures in there, unfortunately. No, but to be fair, some of it is just sacred. I do feel like it's an expensive day out in Bangkok, yeah. considering we did the boat and you pay per temple you go into as well. But to be honest, it's a small price to pay really when this might be the only full day we sort of do in Bangkok. We've got a couple of days left, but this is like our main touristy day today. Um, but obviously, because it is the capital, there is like, it is just more expensive in general. But yeah, definitely worth coming to check out. I feel like you kind of can't come to Bangkok and not see at least the Grand Palace. A few moments later. not really sure what to do we both still feel very jet lagged yeah. and tired as chaotic as it is it's almost a bit too chaotic for just like a couple we're gonna walk back down Kosan Road not in the middle because we'll be stuck in a human traffic jam again but we'll just get in there enough to see the fireworks and see the poppers go off and then I think we're gonna head home Oh, it is the afternoon. It's actually New Year's Day today. We had a proper lion, didn't we? Yeah, still tired. <laughs> we ended up waking up about 11ish in the end, and it is now half past 12. We haven't eaten anything other than this banana. I've also started accumulating in the last couple of days this really weird rash up my leg. I'm really not sure how well it's even picking up on camera. It's quite dark in this room, and this was way worse this morning, I think. But it's like all up my leg, all round the back all around the sides of my ankles on both legs as well. So I've whacked a lot of Savlon on that this morning and I'm hoping it's just gonna go away on its own. You honestly couldn't write it with me, day two and I've already got something going on. I've also woken up with this friend on my face and this one is painful as book. Um, I don't know if it's gonna work, but I've put Tiger Balm on this this morning and Tiger Balm is meant to heal like everything. So fingers crossed, she will go away by tonight. We had quite a busy day yesterday exploring um, and walking walking and doing all the temples and that so I think today is a much quieter one I'm not sure what we're going to be doing today but Callum's still
still wants to go back to that dog cafe now that it's hopefully open today. And then I think we might see if we can get a Thai massage. So yeah, not a very busy day plan today. Don't know if I'll really film much. There's not a lot going on, but whatever we do get up to, I will show you what we do. Found ourselves in a 7-Eleven. There seems to be about 10 per every two steps you take. This is what we've gone for for our breakfast this morning. A nice little toasty. Callum's gone for ham and cheese. Mine was here, it's not double chocolate cake. Mine's like a sausage one. But we've heard really good things about these just for a quick on the go snack. Okay. So what you got there, Luce? This is my sausage toasty from 7-Eleven. My first impression is it's very like bouncy. It feels like, sure. um, it's like marshmallow. It's called a it's called a sausage cake toasty. Oh, that's hot. How is it? They've definitely tricked me in their wow. selling because in the picture <laughs> it had in the picture it had loads of sausages. Considering this is about a sixty-five what'd you look at? Do you know why it's called cake? Because it's is it cake, maybe? That's probably why. That would make sense, yeah. It's like sweet. This so this is about sixty-five P. Cake. Mine's an actual toasty. What does it taste like? Cake? Cake and no, it's okay. You, no, you know, I have mine. Cake and sausages. So what do you rate it out of ten? Um, Considering the price. Five. Five out of ten. That's interesting. I just I kind of just want to eat the sausages. Wow, that's that's really sad. That's a sad breakfast. <laughs> I thought it was gonna be cake because cake because it's like sandwiched into something. <laughs> I didn't really think it was cake. Okay. That's such a disgusting <laughs> That's my boyfriend. Keep your hands off. Oh, that's so cute. For any of you who don't know, when dogs lay in this position with their legs behind their back, this is called sploot. And my life changed the minute that I learned that word. <laughs> we are currently just in the cafe, just dog watching and people watching. You get a free drink yeah. with entry, which is 350 per month, but it's worth it. I got a strawberry smoothie, and the cup has got all of the dogs printed on it with their names. How cute is that? This is our view. Oh, I got a chocolate chip one. This is our view. All the dogs playing outside. They got loads of ice water. For any dog lovers who would like to visit here, but you're a little bit worried maybe about their well-being and how they're kept, they seem to be very, very well-loved dogs. They are doing all the precautions to make sure they're not hot or overheating. There's like one patch of sun outside and the pug lied in the and they got a wet towel just to put it over his back because it is very hot. Yeah, obviously. Um, obviously the, cli the climate here is much hotter than at home. Yeah. But these dogs, they're used to it. They yeah. probably do this all the time. Any time they poo or they pee on the, on the artificial grass outside, it's getting cleaned immediately and also the dog's buttholes are getting cleaned immediately as well. So it is very good from what they we They do seem see. very well taken care of. I was yeah, worried about do. that, but they all seem you know, very professional and they all genuinely seem to love dogs as well. Callum's just decided he wanted to get um, a drink from this place here. He's gone for... Fire bear, matcha green tea latte. Have you ever had a matcha green tea before? No. <laughs> Thank you. Wow, look at that. And that was 40 bar. 45 bar. So. so <laughs> I'll put it on screen. <laughs> First reaction. Mm. Oh, that's really good. Really Is sweet. It? 
I think that as you go through the layers, it's gonna taste a bit different because you're currently only drinking this bottom layer here. Well, you learn something new every day. I'm gonna leave this vlog here because we are now out of our hostel room and we are just waiting around to be able to board our overnight train tonight. My next video is pretty much gonna be dedicated to first impressions and our first experience on an overnight sleeper train up to Chiang Mai in the north of Thailand. We are super excited. It's currently only 1 p.m. We were out of our room by 11 and we don't board on our train until about 10 p.m. tonight. So we've just got all day to sit and do nothing <laughs> until we go to the train station. Overall impressions of Bangkok. I thought it was, I think it's a very noisy city. It's, you can definitely feel the pollution here. It's very thick, sticky, polluted air. To be honest, we're not much of city lovers normally anyway. Callum cannot stand being in London, let alone being somewhere like Bangkok. It is a different type of city, but yeah, overwhelming, busy, busy, crowded city. Lots of cars, lots of traffic, but overall a generally good experience. I'm not sure if I would hurry back to Bangkok unless I absolutely had to come back here but I am glad that we started our travels in the capital city. Also for anyone wondering the hostel that we have stayed in for these first few nights is called Cozy Ratchatui. I've probably said that completely wrong but I'll leave it on the screen. I wouldn't say it's a very good hostel for socializing and for backpackers. To be honest a lot of the people who we've seen in the hostel kind of look like locals who might be staying here for like work or just passing through the city and not so many backpackers and tourists like ourselves. As a whole it's quite a good location. I feel like it's very near to everything, very easy to get grabs and tuk-tuks to and from places as well. They do have dorm rooms here as well but I am really glad that we chose to have a private room for our first few days just to find our feet a little bit and now I feel more ready to go into a mixed dorm and merge with people I suppose. But yeah I'm gonna leave this video here thanks for watching and please do make sure to check out my next video which is gonna be our first impressions of the overnight train from Bangkok up to North Thailand. If you are new here as well please make sure you subscribe to my channel if you want to see more of our travel content and do like and leave a comment as well if you want to show your love. See you in the next one.